Let's get it popping. Was it supposed to be a big deal? Uh, well, listen, you are a behind the scenes guy. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize how much of a big deal that you are. Yeah, I get, I've been getting that. You know what um, I'm saying? Um, they called me yesterday a living legend. Well, <laughs> accept it, dude. That's what you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Could be worse things to be called. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's get into our, our Six Views interview. You know what I'm saying? This is our what we do on our on our network where I get my one-on-one interviews on. See. You know what I'm saying? I get to get more in-depth interviews with our guests. Not that we don't get in-depth interviews going on on our other programs. Like right, we love hip-hop right. and, um, you know, Six Views Uncut. But the one-on-one aspect gets me to get more information than right. usual. You know That's what I'm saying? That's kind of why I wanted to come and do it in per- person. Yeah. And that was before I realized it was you. Yeah, well. Which made it even better. So I was like, well, okay. We, we, we've known each other for years, too, so this is why I felt it was necessary that we get a one-on-one going on, right? For real. So for the people who are just tuning in now on YouTube, and shout out to the YouTube people, make sure to subscribe, all that good stuff, you know what I'm make saying? Sure you subscribe. You know what I'm saying? But we got um, Dave Strickland, Dave AKA, Strickland, a.k.a. Gordo, because I know you as Gordo. Yeah, a lot of people know me as Gordo. You know what I'm saying? Gordo Gigante. Now here we go into the mode of an unknown and known Aboriginal a mode of only hope and will grow But you are, you know, we've talked about once upon a time rapping But yeah. you're a producer, engineer, you know what I'm saying? You've, you, you've touched many different, like, major projects, you know what I'm saying? And you got, like, a big thing going on right now um, with the, the spirit of hip-hop, you know, Correct. um... It, I don't want to make a mistake. Turtle Beach? Turtle Island. Nothing but a psychopath wonderland. Deals done underhand. So cold, they said he sold for 100 grand. Turtle Island, my bad. Turtle Island, Turtle you know Island. what I'm saying? There's probably a place called Turtle Beach. So. Yeah, there is, there is. Right? But um, even before we get into all that, right? We were talking about the elections off camera, right? Yeah. Um, and a question that I even brought up on the We Love Hip Hop podcast, right? With even Joe Biden now being the winner, mm-hmm. right? How do you think that the elections are affecting us as Canadians? Well, it affects us in a lot of ways. I mean, some of the policies of the Trump administration um, has been affecting us. Um, mm-hmm. We always kind of been in in touch with what's going on there because of how it affects, you know, our economy and stuff like that. And, you know, being our neighbors and a lot of the culture, Canadian culture is engulfed in American culture. Facts. A lot of times we feel like we're there, but we're not. Me, but I thought I was in America till about grade two. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was what where we were mm. um, because everything on TV seemed the same, right? Um, anyway, the the big concern is the transition of of this whole thing. That's what's mm. concerning me personally because it has affected me. Uh, the virus has affected me. Yeah, I've been trapped here. I had a lot of plans for this year mm-hmm. uh, outside of the album and maybe touring and stuff like that. Um, all of my interviews have been on virtual all my performances oh, like I, yeah. I didn't expect none of that yeah. you know so um i'm not i'm taking it like with how everybody else is i'm not like you know being self-centered about it because we all had plans mm-hmm. and i got affected as much as everybody else but i mean i probably could have went back to the states yeah. but i chose that based on the numbers mm-hmm. to stay here and now with the election and I mean, Trump is definitely an anomaly. Yeah. So that's been the whole thing about it. I mean, nor- under normal circumstances, who knows where we'd be at right now? Because, you know, I think a different type of president, even Bush would have handled this different, you know? Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's it's a tough one. I mean, there was a lot of hope in the beginning when I, I kind of looked at Trump as being like a guy who was not a politician and getting elected and, and it kind of being like a Jesse Ventura kind of thing mm-hmm. and was hoping he could bring that sort of change in a lot of ways he did, but then he kind of went sideways everywhere and lost me. So I can't yeah. support that for many reasons, but, um, you know, I'm kind of glad it's over, mm. you know, because it, it's, and it's, it's not really, but, the beginning of the end. The big, the, the, yeah. the first part of the hill. Because when you, I mean, I don't have to tell you what's been happening because you already know, but some of the stuff is just scary and just like, yeah. man, like it affects so many people. And I mean, it's one thing to be a, you know, a jerk or whatever, all mm-hmm. these other labels, but 
some of the stuff is just like, really, dude? Like, something's wrong with yeah. you. Yeah. Know? Like, something's wrong. Like, the emperor's wearing no clothes, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. That should, so, be a, that should be a title of a song right I've been in, <laughs> I, Yeah, I've been, I've been happy all day that it finally, because it's been four or five days of us leading up to, like, yeah, what's going to yeah, happen? Yeah. What's going to happen? Is yeah. It, and it's like, is he going to challenge it? He's challenging it. But, like, you know, he should just do the, the take the high road, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. he could still run again in four years. This is true. This is no, true. It depends what happens. Yeah. I don't think he's going to catch no charges. <laughs> Everybody's like going on about these. I'm like, have you ever seen a president catch any charges? Look at all the stuff Bush did and the yeah. war crimes and nobody catch. They don't have time for that. We'll, we'll, he ain't going to catch nothing. He's just going to keep him moving. He yeah. might go bankrupt. You never know, right? And a lot but, of times rich people don't go to jail. Well, yeah. And I believe in karma. So. Yeah. And. Even like with what you got going on right now, you got like a project that just dropped. I've been going through a few music videos and stuff, and I've been seeing you do like some press, right? Yeah. Um, so explain to us this now, um, the spirit of hip hop. Okay. I know there's different levels. There's the DJing is the drum. Yeah. The MC is the storyteller. Yeah. The B-boy is the dancer. And the tagger is the sand painter. Yeah. The DJ is the drum. Drum. <laughs> The MC is the storyteller. Story. That is a dope pro. Oh, well, it's, I got it tatted on my arm. Sick. Um, that this was a painting I had done that was in the McMichael. Okay. Uh, with the with the um, I was in a. It was in um an exhibit, um, that had to do with photography, telling Toronto's hip hop story. Okay. Um, and they had some of my pieces in there, some of my owls. So I got that title on me because it was like, I never expected to be in the McMichael, mm. right? Um, so that was special. And it also resonates with me because of the project and like what you just said, um, because what the project is saying, what brother Ernie Panicoli says at the beginning mm -hmm. is that, you know, hip hop is indigenous culture. And a lot of people, you know, might get, can, you know, a little confused there because I'm not saying that uh, it didn't come about the way it did. And if you right. go look at like Hip Hop Evolution and some of the other, you know, Buster's album just came out. He talks about it too, mm -hmm. uh, giving respect to to Jam Down Jamaica okay. for having, bringing that. But also what we're saying is not now us being indigenous to Turtle Island doesn't mean, and we're not claiming that. Mm -hmm. We're saying that's a spirit that's always been here that's the same as indigenous culture. Yes. And you're indigenous. Yeah. There's, you know, just because you're not indigenous to Turtle Island, black people or African American people or people of descent in this diaspora, wherever the Caribbean, all that is indigenous from Africa. It's the mm -hmm. same difference. Yeah, so, like, yeah, we're all yeah. brothers. It's not me claiming, saying, no, we invented hip hop. No, no, no. That's the spirit that's been here. It's the same. If you look at what hip hop does, and it being a culture in itself, mm -hmm. and then you look at our indigenous cultures, and that's why we bring those together. Because yes. in a lot of situations, I was noticing that a lot of our youth, youth weren't embracing their cultures, but they were embracing hip hop. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had that moment like, yo, what are you guys doing? It's the same thing. Yeah. You can, you can display it in different ways, but it's the same thing. So like have some pride in that, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us are, um, especially here, and I mean, I, I'm sure there's tons of stories that are similar in different ways, but we're taught to be ashamed of who we are, ashamed of our culture and stuff like that. Yeah. So the meaning behind this is to, you know, bring that together and embrace that and be proud. You know what I'm saying? No matter yeah. who you are, if I'm doing it my way, you might do it your way. And we used to have that. If you used to look at like, you remember the days of native tongues and, mm -hmm. you know, with the, the African medallions and mm -hmm. stuff like that, like there was that, that, that pride and that identity. So, I mean, I don't know why it, it it left or if it did or what happened, but you know it's kind of similar to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons that we could get into yeah, like corporate start, yeah. interest and all that type of stuff. But even like to stay on the um, the indigenous aspect, because you're very in, heavy in the indigenous community, right? Um, can you give us some more like native rappers that we should check for? Like I know. Like the most I know is like snotty nose res kids. I know them; they're really popular. Right. There's a lot of artists right now um, that are on the album. Guys like um, City Natives, mm -hmm. Aspects, Dreezus, Q Rock. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also guys that aren't on the album. There's there's guys like uh, Sebastian Gaskin, who's a okay. rapper and a singer songwriter. Um, there's so much <clears throat> talent. There's guys like uh, Wolf Castle. There's so many people I've been meeting 
um, before and after mm -hmm. while working on the project that I mean there was so much talent for me to even try to like I can't even get it on one album yeah um, and the more the album built the more people I kept meeting yeah and I wasn't trying to leave anybody out or make it a best of but there's just there's so much talent and that's the idea of this was to bring like to the, you know, like, you know, we have talent over here. And maybe if you listen to this album, you'll discover somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what the album's about. It's not about me. It's more about bringing the, um, you know, the two sides of it together. Because a lot of people keep saying indigenous hip hop, native hip hop, when I've been fighting a battle where I'm championing that, but we're trying to get rid of that because it's just hip hop, right? It's just hip hop. It's just hip hop. The people who are spitting it are basically native. Right, but so you nobody, had, uh, not to interrupt you. Right, nobody says when Big Pun started blowing up. No, he's they Spanish. Hip -hop. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, <laughs> you know, but there's also a backstory to that and why that's happened, right? Right. Um, and that goes back to the community and the colonialism, and there's, and that applies to some of the other people too. But I noticed this is a little different, right? So I don't push too hard, but I'm trying to be inclusive, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea was to put, you know different artists from different walks of life together right yeah. and not too many people are able to do that in a lot of ways people don't know each other or there's no common denominator yeah so i tend to be that common denominator so i thought you know what if i approach it like this maybe we could build something out of that you know what i'm saying yeah because you got a really dope video with jordan yeah um that's we love hip-hop alumni by the way yeah um and spade from spade, citizen, yeah, kane. citizen kane you know what i'm saying there's some and history then, there right right and then whitey don's in there whitey and then superman Don. superman's one of the dopest yeah um and you know not to just to forget arts and arts and is dope in his own right mm -hmm. i just shut out the arts and i just did a song with him called alone that just dropped a couple weeks ago dope um but yeah um and he's been doing like uh, song a week for 40 weeks straight. That was nice. the 40th song. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, that's, you know, a feat in itself, mm -hmm, you know? Because mm -hmm. people forget there's more to just, you know, you got the production, you got the orchestration, but you got to record, you got to mix, you got to master. Facts. Even if you don't do video, then you got to promote, then you got to do artwork. A lot of stuff goes into a song, Yeah. you know? And people, a lot of people who don't understand music or how it's made, you know, back in the day, like you take Elvis days or the 50s and stuff when mm -hmm. it was live off the floor yeah. and they cut a record. Maybe people don't know how much technology has changed since then. We don't, you could do it like that, but <laughs> records aren't done like that because we had no choice. Yeah, right? people are so, not all in the same room with the guitar right, playing but that's and the singer. <laughs> we had no other way to do it, right? Yeah. Um, but a lot of people don't know, like when they listen, like, and I would, might have been the same way at some point, but, you know, stereo, mm -hmm. mono. Why is it called stereo? Why is it mono? They're hearing two tracks. Okay, well, then I have to explain. Two tracks. This, don't you think about all that music in there? Mm. Now, but nowadays, when we have the beat machines and making production and, you know, MIDI and all kind of stuff, that's a whole new world. If you were born in that, that then it might be normal, right? But yeah. I don't come from an era from before that, right? So to me, music wasn't on a machine. It was a band. And you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I, I don't play guitar and stuff. I'm just like, I play stuff, but I've all picked it up. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. didn't, I wasn't taught. So like, to, in my mind, that's like, like a modern thing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you don't think about that stuff because I think from a point of view of, of a, like, you know, when I make music, I'm somebody actually playing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. you've ever had, it's, it, you had to have had, the, uh, maybe not, but you, if you've ever had the experience of where you make a beat on like say an MPC or something, mm -hmm. and then the song gets big and then a band plays it, it trips you out. Like Cause especially if you're a guy like me who I didn't study piano, I wasn't trained. Yeah. I'm just like a hip hop guy and learn from, from DJing and from going through samples and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's where I picked up a lot of my musical, like, so I can think out of the side of the box and yeah. I have friends who are like trained musicians and, they kind of get stuck, but yeah. I come from this this off the road way of looking in, and to see that happen blows my mind, right? Yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. like who am I? Like, oh, I'm actually writing music. <laughs> when you think about it, right? Yeah. And I, I, I try. I tend to be hard on myself, not to give myself that much props. Like, mm -hmm. like who do you think you are? <laughs>